The British group Republica had a short career and really peaked for only several years in the late 90s. Formed in the earlier part of the decade, the British band would refer to themselves as an I quote, techno pop punk rock when defining their sound. Their 1996 self-titled record would put them on the map in both America and Europe and produce two big singles including Ready to Go and Drop Dead Gorgeous. But whatever happened to the band? That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Republica's roots began with keyboardist Tim Dorney and multi-instrumentalist Andy Todd, who according to one interview, formed a songwriting partnership after meeting each other in the recording studio while working with another group named Soul Family Sensation. Also happening around this time was that Dorney played in another band called Flowered Up, which had disintegrated by the early 90s. Dorney would recall the drug-fueled implosion of the group, recalling, It all fell to pieces. We struggled to get people together and we ran out of money. One day the singer Liam just walked out and that was it. I haven't spoken to any of them since, he'd say. The pair would form what would become Republica at the time, and their influences included groups like New Order and Happy Mondays. Keep in mind, they hadn't yet come up with the name, but they did have an instrumental track called Out of This World. They just now needed a vocalist, a guitarist, and drummer to finish off the track and round out their lineup. Enter vocalist Saffron, born Samantha Marie Sprackling, who had an English father and a half-Chinese, half-Portuguese mother. She would be born in West Africa, as her father was working for the British American Tobacco Company in the continent until the Biafran War started and her family had to relocate to Brighton, England. Saffron's early exposures to music were found in the 70s and 80s era, including New Wave, Goth, and Punk via groups like New Order, Susie and the Banshees, as well as The Clash. By the late 80s, Saffron would discover acid house music and it would be a blend of her young and older influences that would form her future musical style. Saffron would work as an actress and record with bands including Enjoy, singing lead vocals on their 1990 hit anthem. She would end up joining Dorney and Todd's band after a mutual friend played her the instrumental track Out of This World. The group would add guitarist Johnny Mail and former Bow Wow and Adam Ant drummer Dave Barbrosa. It would be a man named Tim Hadfield who was the joint managing director of a label named Deconstruction. Deconstruction was a dance alternative label who was affiliated with Sony BMG and RCA. Hatfield offered the band a deal after hearing the track Out of This World, and Saffron had previously been signed to the same label. By Tim Dorney's own admission, he would admit to future music how primitive the recording that got them signed was, saying it was really basic and the recording wasn't brilliant. By the time Hatfield offered the band a record deal, they didn't even have a name yet. The band actually delayed signing the recording contract until they came up with a name, and by their own admission, they tried picking names out of a hat. But after that method failed, their manager locked the band in a room until they came up with the name Republica. The group also struggled to name their first album, hence why it was self-titled. Blending the styles of the 1980s dance and punk scenes, the members of Republica were tired of where mainstream music had gone, with Saffron recalling to Rhythm and News magazine, it had fragmented into the opposite of everything it was meant to stand for. I grew up in a village near Brighton, which is on the south coast of England. The first band I saw when I was 13 was The Jam and I loved them. There was a lot of gigs happening in the 80s, so I used to go down every weekend and see The Human League or Susie and the Banshees or Blondie. It was a great time, she'd recall. While some in the media portrayed the band as being part of the dance scene or Britpop, Saffron would reject those labels telling First Cut Groove, we're not part of the scene. You know, we're not grunge or Britpop or a dance act. We're not purists. In a separate interview with Billboard, Saffron would tell the magazine, in England a few years ago, dance was very upbeat with all these happy lyrics and basically we were just sick of that. Not everything is happy and brilliant. We all have problems. I wanted to go back and write good real songs, she would say. The group's self-titled album would be released months apart, with it first appearing stateside in May of 1996. It would turn out that somebody at RCA heard their debut record and suggested putting it out in America first. The album would come out a few months later in October of 1996 in England. The album's first single, titled Bloke, 
would fall on deaf ears, but the two follow-up singles, Ready to Go and Drop Dead Gorgeous, were big hits, especially Ready to Go. In almost two decades, Ready to Go would be licensed over 300 films, TV shows, and commercials, even to the states heavily played at sports stadiums and arenas, and became the New York Rangers theme song. Meanwhile, Drop Dead Gorgeous appeared most notably in the Wes Craven film Scream, and Craven would actually hear the lyrics of the song and personally call Saffron, letting her know the lyrics perfectly matched the film he was working on at the time. The group's principal songwriter, Tim Dorney, would admit to First Cut Groove how the band's first break came at home saying, there's only one radio station in England that really matters and it's called Radio One, with Saffron adding, it's essential for new bands to get played on there or you really don't have a chance. We've actually been quite lucky that they've played quite a lot of our stuff, she'd say. Saffron would tell Billboard magazine the meaning behind their hit song, Ready to Go, stating, like most of her songs, Ready to Go is about relationships. Stylistically, it's about giving someone a second chance. The girl and boy thing can get a bit over the top. Sometimes you have to say, you're all those things and I'm all these things and let's step back and have another go at it. There would be two versions of the single released, a more guitar-driven version for the States, with a more pop-oriented version released in the UK, according to Billboard magazine. To promote their debut record, Republica would embark on a 65-day tour in America, during which Ready to Go would get almost 30,000 plays in America one week, making it the most popular song in the country. The group's self-titled debut album would peak at number 153 on the Billboard charts in America, and sold around 200,000 copies. While back in the UK, they sold 100,000 copies, going gold. Ahead of recording their follow-up album, MTV would report that the band was undergoing several lineup changes, with drummer Dave Barbarossa leaving the group and co-founder Andy Todd leaving as well. Republica's second album titled Speed Ballads would be released in 1998, but their label Deconstruction would fold around the same time, resulting in the album sputtering out. In fact, the album never got an official release in America, and of course failed to match the success of their first record. The band would end up taking a long hiatus starting in 2001, during which Saffron guested on tracks with other artists including Junkie XL and The Cure. Following the dissolution of their label, the band's catalog fell into the hands of Sony, who would issue a Greatest Hits album without the band's permission in 2002. Saffron would express her disgust, telling an interviewer, Yeah, it was an abomination. They didn't even bother to talk to or contact us on track listing, artwork, etc. And the blog was made up. It was actually politically out of our hands to release anything anyway, she would say. The band would reunite in 2008, and by this point in time, the master tapes to Ready to Go were lost. So the group decided to re-record the track, releasing a new mix of the song. They would put out a lone EP in 2013, and over the next decade or so, the bands continued to be a presence on the touring circuit, even debuting new material live. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Story Sticker.